the communists for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. I always thought I'd like to travel until I took that long nine-year ride on the red wagon of the Communist Party. The road was bumpy, the accommodations terrible. And worst of all, there's no return trip. This story is part of that fateful journey. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man... Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked One Way Ticket. I was on another one of those mystery missions for the commies. You know the kind. No questions answered, no reasons given. They just hand you a slip of paper with a name and address on it. You're told to go there. That's all. Just go there. Tonight. The name on the paper, Victor Rocco, photographer. The address, a sleazy penny arcade on the street near the waterfront. A great place to find a photographer, all right. Shooting gallery on one side, ski ball on the other. In the middle, two rows of dime and quarter slot machines showing real-life movies, the kind men like. Against the rear wall, a counter cluttered with stale popcorn, dribble glasses, giant-sized plastic ears, ice tubes containing insects, trick dice, or other esoteric items. And next to this counter, a booth festooned with faded bantam snapshots under a sign reading... Any size, any price, any full snapshots for all occasions. Passport, show for license, identification, novelty follow for the folks back home. Any size, any price, any pose, no waiting. Excuse me. What size for do you want, mister? We got all sizes. We I'm got... looking for Victor Rocco. That's me. Photographer? That's my job. Does it keep you out of the red? Sure. Sure. Come in, Svetic. Come in. Back here. All right, comrade. You just sit here against this white background. Well, wait a minute. I didn't come down here to get my picture taken. <laughs> yes, you did, my boy. What? Please. Now you sit here, huh? Please. Listen, I tell you, I'm right, not... Turn your head this way. Just Start a little, little more this way. That's it. Hold it that way. Hey, watch your lips a little, huh? All right, hold still now. Done. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? <laughs> sure. You come to see a photographer? A photographer takes your picture. Why else do you come here? Because I was sent here to see you. You don't have to, to wait for your copy of the picture. I'll take care of it for you. Why do I need my picture taken at all? Oh, What's and if it? I don't see you again before you leave, Comrade Svetik. Bon voyage. Bon voyage? What are you talking about? First, I find a commie photographer in a penny arcade. That's strange enough. Then he insists on taking my picture, whether I like it or not. That's even stranger. Then he tells me to enjoy a voyage I know nothing about. That's when things stop being strange and become sinister. For two days, I sat around my room trying to figure it out and couldn't. Then, I had a surprise visitor who didn't help at all. Mr. Svetik? Yes? My name's Moore. Uh, here's my card. Hmm. U.S. Immigration Office? That's right. Yeah, come in? Yeah, sure. Come in. Here, sit down. Thanks. 
What's the immigration <laughs> office want with me? Just some questions, Mr. Svedek, if you don't mind. Depends on the questions. We're doing a routine check on an acquaintance of yours, Victor Rocco. He is a friend of yours, isn't he? Acquaintance, yes. Friend, no. Say, why are you asking me about Rocco? I only met him once. Please huh? understand, Mr. Svedek. You aren't required to answer any of these questions if you don't want to. So? Oh, no, that's all right. I just think you drew a dud when you picked me. Can you tell me anything about Mr. Rocco's background? Not much. I know he's a photographer at one of those penny arcades downtown. That's about all. He, uh, snapped your picture on Monday night, didn't he? About 9.45? Yeah. Why? You mind telling me why you chose Mr. Rocco to do the job? Well, he, he was recommended. By whom? By some people I know. Mutual friends? Friends of yours and Rocco's? Acquaintances. I'd like to ask you one more question, Mr. Svedek, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Why did you have your picture taken? By Rocco? By anyone. I don't know. You don't know why you had your picture taken? That's right. Mr. Svedek, if you don't want to answer that question, okay. I prefer not to have you hedge around. And I'm not hedging, Mr. Moore. I'm telling the truth. I don't know why I had my picture taken. Do you? No. No, I don't know either. But somehow I think I should know. Well, that's all, Mr. Svedek. Thanks a lot. Beaker, this is Red. Matt, where are you? In a booth near my house. Anything wrong? No, I'm not sure. What's all this hocus-pocus about the immigration office and Victor Rocco and everything? Oh, did Moore call on you? Yeah. Well, there's no need for all that sort of thing. If I knew anything about Rocco, you guys would know it, too. Moore doesn't know about your job, Matt. He knows you simply as a busy little Red. What's he want with Rocco? Mr. and Mrs. Rocco have applied for passports. They've been in and out of this country a lot lately, but they've never bothered to file for citizenship. Oh, the State Department isn't sure what to do about Rocco. They may detain him or let him go and then close the gates behind him. Uh, him and his wife, that is. Is she a commie, too? Yes, but we need to know more than that. We don't know what Rocco does to earn his keep in the party. We don't know why he and his wife roll up all that ocean mileage. We have to get something definite on them, Matt, and soon. Well, I wish I could help, Baker, but I'm more confused than you are. You've got to help, Matt, somehow. Yeah, somehow, but I... Look, chum... We have a long chain of facts and figures on the communist operations in this area. The Roccos may be an important link. If you can help us pin something on them... Okay, Baker, I'll try. But I may end up with that chain around my neck. I left the phone booth more confused than ever. The FBI and the State Department's immigration office had plans for Comrade Rocco, all right. But beneath all the unexplained circumstances, it was obvious that Rocco and the party had plans for me. Until I knew what they were, I couldn't help the FBI or myself. I headed back to my room and determined to get some sleep, to forget Rocco and the Reds just for a little while. I fished out my keys, intending to unlock the door to my room. And then suddenly I was playing host to a skin full of goosebumps. The door was unlocked. Someone had opened it while I was gone. And that someone was undoubtedly sitting there in the dark now, waiting for me. I gathered up all my goosebumps and some of my courage and headed for the light switch. Ah, oh, Comrade Pavetti. Who at last? Who are you? What are you... Oh, I know, I know. It's impolite to break in this way. That's right. Well, a little impoliteness for the party won't hurt, will it? One advantage to being a woman, you can use bobby pins to pick locks. All right. You're here now. What do you want? Just keeping an eye on you, comrade. You don't mind my being here, do you? That depends. On what? Oh, it's perfectly all right with my husband. Oh, uh, I forgot. I'm Teresa Rocco, Victor's wife. Oh, I see. And your husband sent you here? Mm-hmm. To keep an eye on you. He'd like to see you tonight, too. Not tonight. Tell him I intend to get some sleep. After you see Victor. Now, look, Mrs. Rocco, I'm a little fed up with all this foolishness. Foolishness? Yes, all this hush-hush stuff, all the mystery, the unexplained actions. I don't like being watched by fellow comrades, and I don't like being surprised by strangers in the dark, even when they're beautiful women. What's more... Uh, uh where have you been the last five or ten minutes, comrade? And I don't like the way your husband... Comrade, is... 
Where have you been the last few minutes? Making a phone call. Why? Doesn't this phone work? Well, doesn't it? It isn't good policy to talk party business on this phone. What party business? I was trying to phone your husband. Oh, really? What for? I wanted to warn him that an immigration officer was here asking questions about him. And you, too. No, Moore. Harold Moore. Yeah, Moore. From all indications, Mrs. Rocco, you and your husband are about to be deported. No, no, not yet. What do you mean, not yet? How can you stop Oh, them? they'll kick us out, all right, sooner or later. But not now. Right now, the party doesn't want Victor to be kicked out. So I may go, but he'll stay. You're being a little naive. Even the Communist Party can't keep the American Come government Come on, let's from... go, Comrade. Go where? My husband wants to see you. Why? Come on, come on. I told you I'm fed up with all the secrecy and mystery. You know, this reluctance of yours isn't doing my feminine vanity any good at all. I have news for you. I'm not interested in your vanity or... Are you interested in the welfare of the party? Of course I am. And are you interested in your own personal welfare? The party comes first, of course. Now then, for your own sake and the party's, stop talking so much. Are you coming with me? Uh, Okay, let's go. Oh, you found him okay, huh, Theresa? He didn't object too much. <laughs> Ain't I got a terrific wife, Svetik? Yeah, charming. Oh, thank you, comrade. Okay, Rocco, what do we do now? Play ski ball or take another snapshot? Oh, I got the picture we need, Svetik. We got it here someplace. No, I had it. Oh, no, here it is. What's that? Passport. You mean the State Department approved your passport after all? My husband approves his own passport. And this is a good one, all right. Like they say, I made it myself. Oh, I take it, Svetik. That's yours. Mine? Oh, I don't need a passport. Here, you see? Your picture's right in it. And it's good, huh? But you're, you're the one who's taking a trip, aren't you? <laughs> all right, Teresa. All right. No, Svetik, you take another look. That name under your picture in the passport. Victor Rocco. Wait a minute. It's my picture. Your name. What's the gag, Rocco? This well, is... I thought maybe Teresa told you. The party don't want me to be deported yet. So you go in my place. What? <laughs> Teresa, cut it out. <laughs> I can't help it. He looks so funny. Why so worried, Comrade Svetik? Don't you want me for a wife? There's nothing to it, Svetik. When America kicks out Mr. and Mrs. Victor Rocco, you'll be Victor Rocco. After all, you're doing it for me and the party. Now, just a minute. You can't kick me out of my own country. Oh, no? You watch and see, comrade. Starring as Matt Sabetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. Who wants to live in America anyway? That was Comrade Rocco's implication when he told me I was to be kicked out of my own country. I couldn't answer that the way I wanted to. I still had to play the part of the loyal red even though I was being deported by the commies. You know, Victor, I think Comrade Sovetic doesn't want me for a while. Rocco, this can't possibly work. The immigration office is bound to find out about those phony passports. Oh, sure, sure, they'll find out, but not right away. You see, I got work to do here. I got to finish it. While the immigration people are finding out about this, I'll have time to finish my job, and you'll have time to get to Europe and do your job. Just what job is that? Deliveries. My work is passport, citizenship papers, all sorts of legal documents. I make them up for party members who need them. You mean you forge passports, legal papers? Oh, sure. Me and Therese. We have a lot of comrades overseas, you know, who can be very valuable to the party here in America. I see. And I'm to deliver the phony passports to them, that is? That, that's it. I don't know my way around Europe, you know. I I do, comrade. Oh, Therese is a big help. She'll take care of you. 
Doesn't it bother you, Rocco? Huh? Another man with your wife? <laughs> oh, listen, Sven, it could do you good to get out of America. You're getting those sentimental bourgeois ideas. Hmm. What about her passport? Oh, my passport's all in order. Sure, I put it in order. Now, listen, if you've got any loose ends to clear up, Svedek, you better go do it. You sail for Europe in two days. Loose ends. I was at loose ends, all right. Soon I'd be leaving this country with the name, identity, and reputation of a man I despised. A man despised by the American government. And Rocco... He'd stay here, brewing new poisons for the commies to use until the hoax was discovered. I left the Rocco's at the Penny Arcade and headed for the street. I had to get word to the FBI or to the immigration office or to... to anyone. I had to do it now. But it was late. Too late to find a cruising taxi. I crossed the street, turned a corner where the traffic was heavier. Hey, taxi! Taxi! Hey! What's the matter with you, you lunkhead? Stepping off the curb like that. I might have... I'm sorry. I've got to get across town fast. Sorry, bud. I got a fare. But this is an emergency. There aren't any cabs around here at this hour. My I... flag's down, bud. Sorry. Move back, will you? It's important, I tell you. Maybe if you ask your passenger... Watch yourself. Pardon me. I hate to be so melodramatic, but would you mind if no, I... No, I don't mind at all. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Rocco. In fact, I was going to stop by your place. Why? To see if I could help you pack. Or anything. Or, uh, did you have other plans? No. No other plans. Well, thanks. Thanks for the lift. Are you sure you don't need help? I imagine you have lots to do. Yeah, but I'll manage somehow. Thanks anyway. There are lots of tricks to packing for an ocean voyage, you know. Well, if I need help, I'll call on you, Mrs. Rocco. Good. I'll be around. Yeah, I know that. I didn't sleep that night or the next night. Everywhere I turned, I seemed to see eyes. Cold, red eyes. Downstairs, on the street, right below my window, a car was parked all night. And its driver was very much awake. During the day, I kept noticing faces that were vaguely familiar, always behind me and just out of reach. The man across the aisle from me on the streetcar was the same man I'd seen eating at a nearby table in a restaurant in another part of town. Maybe it was my imagination, nerves, jitters, whatever it was, it kept me from getting in touch with the FBI. And... Hello? Mr. Sweaty? Yes. Who's this? Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Svetty. Who is this? This is Moore. Harold Moore of the immigration office. Moore. Moore, oh, man, am I glad to hear your voice. What? Now, listen. Listen hard. I... Hello? Hello, you still there? Yes. I thought we were disconnected. Yeah, I heard it, too. What were you saying about being glad to hear my voice? Oh, well, I... I've been having trouble with this phone. Couldn't get incoming calls. It's good to know it's working again. Oh, I thought perhaps you'd have more information for me about Victor Rocca. No, not a thing. Well, that's the only reason I called. No, I... I can't tell you anything more. Nothing. All right. Thanks anyway. Bye. Bye. What the devil are you... Just testing my bobby pin on your lock. Mine. Were you... Were you here while I was... While you were on the phone? Yes. You handled that fool very well. All right, Mrs. Rocco. What do you want this time? Nothing. Just stop by to see how you are getting along with your packing. Haven't done much, have you? I want to see your husband first. Now? Now. Let's go. Rocco, what about those phony passports I'm to deliver overseas? Oh, they'll be ready. Don't worry. I haven't packed yet, Rocco, because I want to hide that stuff the right way. Is it much of a package? No, no, no. Just a large envelope. Fit behind the lining of a suitcase easy. Okay, let's have it. Not till you get to the pier. I'll supply the suitcase. My luggage is a matched set. An odd suitcase would attract attention. Give me the envelope now. Now, listen, comrade. Too many things can happen between now and sailing time. What's wrong with you, Rocco? Come on, let's have them. Are you sure you'll be... Be careful? Yes. Give them to me. 
You can check on the way I hide them if you want. All right, all right, I'll get them. My plan wasn't very clever, but it was the only chance I had. I intended to sew a dummy envelope into the lining of the suitcase and mail the real thing to the FBI. But I must have undersold myself on Rocco's diligence. All right, Svenk, let's go. Is that the envelope? Yeah. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. There's no need for you to... I think there is. I sew this in the lining of the suitcase, if you don't mind. I don't want you to be questioned at the pier. Where's your luggage, Svetik? You've been keeping track of your luggage? Well, stop worrying, Rocco. I had it taken aboard. Was mine with yours, Matt? Yes, it Listen. was. Stop calling me Rocco. And you, Teresa, stop calling him Matt. From now on, he's Victor Rocco. You understand? Oh, I wish you'd stop being so nervous. I have a right to be nervous. Uh, pardon me a moment, sir. Are you Victor Rocco? Uh, uh, yes, I... Yes, I am. Why? May I see your passport a moment? Oh, wait a minute. What's the meaning of this, officer? There's no reason... Just a mix-up with the luggage, sir. A what? Well, what sort of mix-up? It isn't lost. No, 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 ma'am. Uh, would you mind stepping into the customs office, please? This is your luggage, isn't it, Mr. Rocco? Oh, yes. Yes, that's it. Uh, those bags over there are mine. If you'd uh, like to look through those... I think this is an outrage. Customs inspection Mr. is killing... The man must have some reason for it. That's right. Nothing to be alarmed about, as long as you haven't got anything to hide. Where do people usually hide things? Depends. Usually they find a spot in the lining of a suitcase. Well, we'll see. opened the suitcases, I found myself praying that he'd find the hidden envelope. Praying like I'd never prayed before. This was the last chance I had. The last chance to stay in my own country and keep my own name and identity. Well, that does it. Sorry for all the inconvenience, folks. If you like, I'll see that your luggage gets well, you, out. You didn't find what you were looking for? Well, you needn't sound so disappointed. Hey, come on, let's get on the boat. Awfully sorry, folks. Have a pleasant trip. Staterooms B7 and B9. Yeah, that's us. What? Aren't you coming in, Rocco? No. You look grimmer than I feel. What's the matter? Why should you feel grim? You're getting out of this bourgeois snake pit. You're going to where the proletariat can flex its muscles in the stupid, flabby face of democracy. This isn't We're... the time for a speech, Victor. Aren't you going to say goodbye to me? Well, there's still a few minutes. I'll come in for a second. Okay. Come on in. Hello, everybody. Who was? Thought you'd never get here. Uh, my name's Beaker, Federal Bureau of Investigation. What? There must be some mistake. We Nothing have... Nothing to worry about. I just came aboard to bring you something, Rocco. Something for me? No, Svetik, not you. Rocco. What? Here, two passports. One for Victor Rocco and one for Mrs. Rocco. Oh, well, there is a mistake. We have our passports. Don't know how you manage that. These passports were just approved by the State Department. Approved? Yes, that's why I'm here now. The government wants to be sure the Rocco family leaves America for good this time. You two won't be coming back under any name. Come on, Svetik. All ashore. Your luggage is still in the customs office. You're not going anywhere. I left the ship with Beaker. The Roccos left America on the ship caught in a trap that was sprung when they wouldn't wait for legitimate passport approval. They were due to pay the price of failure to their red comments overseas. For the all-important envelope went from the lining of my suitcase to the files of the FBI. I learned from Beaker that the commies weren't the only ones who'd been keeping close check on me. He'd assigned some friends to the job, too. Sure, I tried to thank him, but how... How do you thank a man for your freedom? This time, as I walked away from the harbor, back to the people I despised and the work I hated, things seemed to make more sense. Behind it all, there were friends, and there was freedom. Knowing this, it was easier, much easier, to walk the crooked red road, to walk that road alone.
Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews, friend. As one of our greatest philosophers has pointed out, our government was founded on three basic ideas. One, the love of liberty. Two, belief in progress. And three, faith in the dignity of man. If we were to sacrifice any one of these three concepts, we'd lose them all. If we let that happen, then we just don't deserve democracy. In the story you just heard, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us then, won't you? <laughs> <laughs>